Hey guys, today we're looking at part two of 6.3, all about logarithms. So in this part, we've got two main ideas that we're looking at here, looking at uh, logarithms being inverses of exponentials, and then we're also gonna get into graphing with our boxes three and four. So like I had talked about in part one, logarithms are basically just the inverse of an exponential, just the opposite or the reverse of an exponential, which is what we're gonna be actually be starting with today. We're gonna show that um, if, if two functions all have the same base, they are inverses of each other with one being an exponential and the other being a logarithm. So if I wanted to show that the two things are inverses of each other, if you remember that back from last chapter, inverses have to be, um, to have to give us both x, both just back to x when we do our composite functions. So if we were to do f, I'm going to skinny this up a little bit here for this little space. If we do f of g, of x, we should get back to x, which if we do that, f of g being log base b of x, that would be base b to the log base b of x power. That's supposed to give us x because they're inverses of each other. If I do it the other direction, g of f of x, because they are inverses of each other, not just one being the inverse of the other, that means they have to undo each other. So um, f here is b to the x power. So when I put that into g, log base b of b to the x power gives us x. What this is demonstrating for us, I mean, I'm telling you that they're inverses of each other. We're starting with that as our definition. So looking at these two, when I look, use my definition of things being inverses of each other, not just knowing that these are inverses of each other, we get to see this conclusion. These last two parts here are the most important. What this tells us is if we have a base b with a log of the same base in my exponent, those two things basically just cancel each other out and we're just left with whatever was evaluated for my log. Or vice versa, if I have log base b of b to some x power, those two things cancel each other out and we're just left with whatever my number was. So since we know that those are inverses of each other, something like number one becomes really easy because here, if we recognize here that we've got 10 to the log of four power. Now on, on the last set of notes in, in part one, we saw that our two special cases of our logs, the ones that we don't have numbers written as our base, our common log is log base 10, which is what we're dealing with here. And then of course our natural log ln, that's log base e. So here, because this is 10 to the log base 10 power, those two things cancel each other out, and my solution is just four. On uh, number two, a little trickier because my base is here. My first one is log base five of 25 to the x power. So because my base is five and my base is 25, they don't match exactly right away. But what I can do here is rewrite. I can rewrite 25 as five squared, that's still to the x power, which power rule for exponents tell us I just multiply those two things together. We have log base five of five to the two x power. And hey, look at that. We have a log of a base five, an exponential with a base five. My answer is just two x. And that's it for box one. So if they had the same base with one exponential, one, one logarithmic, they cancel each other out. So in number three, in box two, we're working on finding those inverses, finding those inverses. So we're trying to rewrite these so that we, we can have whatever our other term is. So when we're finding an inverse, just like we did back in chapter six, or sorry, back in chapter five, the first thing we do in finding an inverse, we're gonna replace this f of x term with a y, and then we're gonna flip-flop those two positions. So. Right, we have y equals six to the x power. When I flip flop them, I have x equals six to the y power. And now I'm trying to get rid of my six, right? I'm trying to get my y out of my exponent because y is what I'm trying to solve for. I'm trying to find inverses. You flip flop x and y and then you solve for y, which we're trying to get y out of my exponent. I've never had to do that before, but like we saw on the previous box, if I have an exponential of a base six here, if I did the log base six of both sides, 
So I'm gonna have to scooch this over a little bit to leave some room. Oops. I know that a log is just an operation, just like adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, square rooting. It's just an operation. So as long as I do the same thing on both sides, I could do a log base six on both sides. And what that does is cancel out my log base six and my six, I'm left with y. And then over on the left side, I still have log base six of x. Hey look, I solved for y. My final answer would be that the inverse of f, f inverse of x is log base six of x. Which, that one, pretty easy to see because we don't have any other operations happening there. It's just six to the x power. The obvious inverse would be log base six because those two are inverses of each other. Where I have to be careful is something like number four where it's not just a log. I have some other operations happening in my expression. So what I have here, again, I'm gonna start with the same process. This of course is y instead of g of x. So then I'm gonna go ahead and flip flop those. So that gives me x equals ln of the natural log of y plus three. Now this one, a little trickier, we might have to rewrite um, something if we want to. Remember here, I'm gonna do a little note here in yellow. Remember that ln of x is log base e of x. That's what ln means, that's the natural log. It's the log with the base of a natural number. So if I'm trying to cancel out a log base e, I need those terms to be exponents on a base of e. So this one's a little bit weird because what I actually have to do is write both sides of my equation here as an exponent on a base of e. Now this is something we've never done before because in Algebra 1 we solved these before. These are exponential equations. We got to the point where our exponents, our bases were the same so that our exponents could be equal to each other. But this is still completely allowed mathematically. As long as it's doing the same thing on both sides, here I'm just rewriting both sides of my equation as an exponent on a base of e. When I do that, hey look at this, my e and my log base e cancel out. I'm left with e to the x power equals y plus three. So if I'm trying to get my y by itself, I just subtract three on both sides. y equals e to the x power minus three. So my final, my final answer, g inverse of x, it's a horrible negative one, inverse of x is e to the x power minus three. And that's finding inverses. That's boxes one and two. So take a quick look if you need to copy anything else down before we move on to boxes three and four, which is getting into the graphing side of things. Graphing in boxes three and four. All right, here we go. So when we're going through and graphing things, now there's a couple of different ways you can handle this. I think what's easiest for us to kind of wrap our heads around, instead of having to memorize a new way of doing things, instead of having to memorize uh, a new set of rules to follow, what we're doing for our logarithms is just rearranging our terms into an exponential. We know that exponentials and logarithms are inverses of each other, which means they're just rearranged versions of each other. Because if I wanted to, if right now, instead of my function notation, if this was y equals log base b of x, we know that f of x is just the output, so that's my y value. If I wanted to, remember my rearranged version of that from back in part one, was that b to the y power equals x. I find that much, much easier to use rather than trying to guess and check at some other things. It's gonna be far easier for us to pick out nice values of y and get nice values of x. So just like we saw in exponentials, if we were graphing uh, a base of that's bigger than one, we should be using zero, positive one, and positive two, because those will give us our nice whole numbers for our answers. If we have a base that's smaller than one, then we should be dealing with zero, negative one, and negative two, because those exponents will flip each other over and we'll evaluate nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and try that. Now the two functions that we're gonna graph here, go kind of what I, I would try to consider, not really parent graphs, but just kind of the simplest graphs that we could have for logarithms is, there we go. This one is going to be 
log base 2 of x. And then over here, this is going to be log base a half of x. So when we go through and do this, we need x, some space, and y. And we should have three points that we're plotting. We need three points on this, just like we did back in Algebra 1 when we were graphing our exponentials. This in, my, in the middle, my work part, is b to the y power, which in the case of this top graph means 2 to the y power. So if I'm picking out x values, it'll work out nicely in that expression. Basically, what exponents on 2 would make nice numbers? Well, 0 would be nice, 1 would be nice, and 2 would be nice. All three of those would be nice whole numbers. So if I do 2 to the 0 power, I get 1. If I do 2 to the first power, I get 2. 2 squared gives me 4. And I have an x and y value that work out nicely. Now you have to be careful with this because I actually even made this mistake. I'm picking out y values and plugging in x values. Like I'm getting x values back out. So it's a little bit backwards from how we usually do. We usually pick out x values and get y values back out. But we should be picking out y values because our exponent is y and we're getting x values back out. So I, I say that because once you evaluated, our coordinates here are actually 1, 0, 2, 1, not negative 1, 2, 1, and 4, 2. So 0 to the right, sorry, 0, 1, sorry, 1, 0, 2, 1, and then I am... Yeah, 2, 1, and then 4, 2. Those are our three points right there. Now, as you picked out smaller and smaller y values, aka bigger negative numbers, you would end up flipping that fraction over and getting small, 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 small exponents. But the same thing that happened with our exponentials happens with our logarithms. We end up having this imaginary line. We have an asymptote here that my graph gets really, really close to but never actually hits. In the case of a logarithm, it's actually a vertical asymptote instead of a horizontal asymptote. So my graph looks something like this. So it approaches close to my asymptote on the bottom, curves around on the, as it moves up, and then goes out in that direction. So this is what it looks like, my graph should look like when my base is bigger than 1. It's going to curve up on the right side. If I go the other direction here, with box, the bottom one in box 3, if my base is now a half, the equation I'm actually graphing is 1 half to the y power equals x. So my y, x, work table is 1 half to the y power. So now, because of the fraction, my numbers will work out nicely here. 0 is still going to be nice, but now my negative y values, my negative exponents, will flip those over and make nice whole numbers. So if I do that, 1 half to the 0 power is 1. 1 half to the negative first, well that flips it over. That's now 2 over 1 to the first, so just 2. And then 1 half to the negative second is 2 over 1 squared, which is 4. So now my points are 1, 0, so still right here, 2, negative 1, so down here, and then 4, negative 2, are down there. So my asymptote still right here at 0, so vertical, and then close, 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 curves away, and that way. Arrows on the end. So that's what my graph should look like if my base is, oops, is between 0 and 1. All right, one problem here, we're going to give it a shot. So if our function is now f of x equals log base 3 of x, let's go ahead and try and graph that bad boy. So I'm going to go ahead and write the rearranged version first. We'll do our table up top before we actually graph. So this rearranged version, if this is y equals log base 3 of x, my other, my exponential version of this would be 3 to the y power equals x. 3 to the y equals x. So if I go ahead and make my table y, x, y, 
I know it made it so wide, but that's fine. Uh, we've got three to the y power equals x. So in this case, because my base is bigger than one, I should be using zero, one, and two. Three to the zero equals one, so my x value is one. Three to the first equals three, so my x value is three. Three squared is nine, so nine. My coordinates are one, zero, three, one, and nine, two. Those are my three coordinates for that particular graph. So I'll go ahead down here to my graph paper. One, zero is right there. Three, one. Nine, positive two is right there. I'll go ahead and plot that asymptote. And then again, along the asymptote going up, curves away sharp. Oh, I missed. Let's try this way. Start here and then curve down. That's nicer. I like that better. There we go. So that is log base 3 of x. Now that's all I got for you guys. Those are the two main ideas here for the last part of 6.3. So your homework, which is up there on the screen, is also on your paper if you have a hard copy of it. Page 315, six, 30, sorry, 36 through 64, every other even. So you're just working on multiples of 4. 36 to 64, every other even. As always, if you guys have any questions, concerns, thoughts, ideas, hopes, or dreams, make sure you guys are reaching out and letting me know. Otherwise, have a fantastic day. We'll see you soon.